will allow people to create games similar to Ultima 6. And what, what we are going to work today is follow the plan that we had made for the Milestone 1. So we are going to be making some simple maps, uh, eventually, I mean in the real um, in the real version of the scenario that we're planning to do, these maps will be more elaborate, but the one that we are going to do now will, will be just like placeholders to get things working. So, um, if you want to have some details on the plot of the game that we are planning to do, you can check the latest or the last stream uh, or the video where I explain that in detail. But, anyways. This is what we're going to do. We're going to be doing the intro and the initial setup. That's the first thing. So, when the game starts, the intro displays as follows. The avatar has been summoned back to Britannia, arriving during the night in the forest near you. So, we're going to create that map where we arrive. And it's going to be pretty simple. Before doing the streaming, I was doing some tests, and I think uh, we're going to do, need to do some work on the engine to support um multi tile um objects so for example the trees and some other stuff it just doesn't work very well <coughs> with the perspective and the and the tiled nature of of the game and I will explain this very quickly basically if you see these multi tile trees so in reality, only this part of the of the composition is meant to be solid. So you should be able to overlap them, and without having this kind of gaps. So, for example, let me show you what I mean. If we try to place these trees one by the other, well, you're, you see that there's some gaps here. But the way that the uh, Ultima engine or the Ultima perspective for Ultima 6 was made is that these trees should be able to be overlapped, right? And we cannot, I mean, we cannot use tiled alone for this because you will have to end up with a lot of layers and a lot of added complexity just to um, to, to support this so in the future, near future, we will have to work on that. So for example, let me show you that, what I meant. You should be able to create compositions like this. Um, not exactly this. It's easier to make it here. So as you can see, these tiles are kind of overlapping, but the um, the actual solid tiles are these two alone, the, the base of the tree. So you should be able to walk here, here, and here, or to place other trees. Anyways, in the end we'll have something like, you will only place the base of the tile, and then um, the engine itself will complete the multi-tile object and take care of displaying it correctly in the depth and, and everything so just wanted to mention that for now we are not going to be doing any of that we are going to use single tile objects so it's going to look much more flat but that will do for our first iteration so let's remove this layer that we did as a test and as I mentioned um, the avatar arrives at this forest. We're using Densis tile set initially. Well, initially no. That's what's going to that's what's going to come bundled with the engine. Uh, so we put some noise here and there. Placeholder map, and then let's place the trees. So we're going to use these small trees. We're going to place them on a different layer above the terrain. So let's make that clearing. We are going to arrive here in the moon gate, and then <clears throat> we are going to meet with Chamino here. He's going to join our party. 
and we're going to be attacked if we don't have him join like in the conversation here that's the plan but if, if you don't because this is an ultima game as you can do whatever you want then he's going to oh uh, let me think about that well not really no that's optional if you want he can join you if not he's going to act as a friendly NPC and will join the battle that is going to take place here so here's where you're going to be ambushed by the guards by the soldiers and basically that's it I don't want to make it any more complex so let's just this is the, the uh, map that we're going to be using let's just put something here just something fancy let's say that we have a very simple circle of stones here this is where you will arrive so let's place these things here okay to do here 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 and here eight and let's just uh, put some variety of stones I know this is a placeholder but this will have to suck um, then let's place a small indicator of where we are meant to spawn like this dirt thing if you are making like a real map then you would would use all the different options to kind of make the uh, this kind of terrain blend better anyways uh, right now the engine requires you to create a tile layer which is um, forgot the name but let's see the other maps we have here solid tiles right solid tiles and I think it can actually we can use any tile to mark the uh, places of the level that are going to be not walkable not sure if I'm going to change that in the future because we may instead link the add some properties to the tiles in the map that uh, decide if they are walkable or not but for now this is what we have so let's follow that In, the idea with this is that you can make the tiled map as complex as you want and um, all it I mean in the game it's going to load it and it's going to display it and uh, it won't require you to have like a, a fixed structure for the tile map except for some um, things like having the a layer which is called solid tiles and that's the layer that determine determ that defines um, where the player can or cannot walk so yeah we could of course we, we could use this layer and put some trees on there but I believe that it may I don't know that could also work but I think it's better to have like this, this kind of mask of where you can or where you cannot walk so yeah let's put some small what I mean is for example this we could use this layer where we have the trees to also place some decoration like some flowers like this and we don't want them to be um, solid I mean we want the player to be able to walk over them so yeah anyways let's save this and actually this map compared to the other maps that we had here has uh, external tile sets I'm not sure how well that is going to work in what we have hopefully it works so let's just go ahead and try to use it as I was starting some work here on the intro sequence 
So let's do something. Let's create another map entry here. We're going to call it uh, clearing actually forest forest one, and the file name is forest one.json. And let me check something. Uh, in some place we are actually using this um, key to define what's the first map to show uh, but I forgot where so I'm looking for that uh, maybe in the level class level loader right so here it is <clears throat> Ideally, we would have this configured somewhere. Right now, it's hard coded here. So instead of loading the summoning, we're going to load the forest one. <clears throat> but that's not enough because I think somewhere else we are loading the, the map. So that should be in some kind of place. So let's look for this summoning string here. So this is the function that loads the tiled map. And right now this is loading a single map. And as you can see here we are adding the tiles of the images, <coughs> terrain, items, monsters. And then we are creating the layers, vegetation, veget terrain, vegetation buildings and objects. And I wonder where we are, oh, should be like in a separate part where we are creating or using the solid tiles <coughs> layer. No, we are not. Hmm. Load tile map solid mask. Well, oh, right, single quotes versus double quotes. So this is where we get this mask, this solid mask. But but as I see here, we are expecting a specific uh, layers, specific layers, um, which is not what I thought we were doing. Terrain, objects, vegetation, buildings. Let's create this empty vegetation and building tile buildings buildings right tile layers and also it's expecting these tiles of images terrain items and monsters so it's similar to this terrain items and monsters let's keep that because I think it's tying right, it's tying that tiles a definition with the actual tiles a image that it's loading. So let's keep that. Let's go here and then let's add some tile sets. Hmm, if I could, maybe from here, new tile set source. It's going to be this is the terrain and let's name this terrain and embed it on the map right and we also need items and monsters so let's do the same <coughs> for the item style set embedded in the map items and the other one monsters embedded in the map this one and let's can we remove this well but we already created the whole map using this tile set which sucks because we are going to have to repeat it but I don't want to do that let's see if I can fix that it did in the JSON file 
So here are these. Let's say, let's see, terrain, objects, vegetation, buildings, solid tiles. Well, these are the layers. I'm looking for the tile sets. So tile sets. First, oh, crap. I would have to modify the GIDs. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to repeat the map? I don't want to repeat the map. So I will have to play around with this. First, GIDs. It's not that bad. I will just subtract 32. Oh. No. I will have to subtract. <sighs> 1486 from 85 from each one so I'm going to first close here I'm going to go ahead and remove this tile set and put a note here because else I will forget and we would will just subtract and hope that everything works fine. So, four nine seventy one minus fourteen eighty six is fourteen eighty six. Of course, it is. And then thirty two twenty seven minus fourteen eighty five is. 1742 we save and we reload the map and it failed we failed for some reason why we should it shouldn't have failed to our account Let's see. Maybe, oh, because of this, sorry. Comments in a JSON file. Recent files, forest one, and it worked. Great. So, okay. So that should work to load it. Um, what else do I need? Well, I need to make sure, sure that during the assembly phase, the um, the actual files are copied. So I will have to run again the assembly task. So let's do that. Let's do that here. Build. That is H. Oops, scenario info routine. Scenario info routine. Oh, what did I miss? Oh, okay. something failed of course something failed I will not expect it to work the first time um, cannot read property resize world of undefined layer compression is on support oh so we have to save this as uncompressed forest one Somewhere, oh, here I think it is right. We don't want it to be compressed. Build again. Reload. 
those. Okay. So we are on the clearing, and as you can see, uh, we cannot move into the uh, into the trees, but we are supposed to appear here. So that initial uh, that initial place where we appear is currently a hard coded as well. And I think it's about time we start taking or reading things from here. So we need something, I've been thinking about that, something like a, a starting state. And that will include the party members, the location, the map. So we are going to begin in the forest one map. And we are going to begin at X. Um, 24 y 26 so let's go and check where the player is created start game we initialize some stuff here we load the level here and we put the player in this position so do we have the scenario info here I think we do uh, I don't see it, but it should be available here. I, actually, I'm not sure if we are accessing that. So let's see, in the build process, we copy this. Oh, wait. We actually gotta put this here. Well, what happened there is just, just like. Uh, Okay, okay, I'm confused. Okay, so this file is inside the scenarios directory and it's copied here. That part seems to be working well. And then we build everything and then we copy all the different stuff. So we need to see where this scenario info is being required and it's been required here in the loader and it's only used to get the tile maps okay but that's the only part what we are requiring it in the loader so we need to require it in some other places for example here for starters let's do that we require the scenario info and then we're going to have this object available and then we can use the starting state so let's pass well this is actually the same module so Let's uh, obtain the starting state. Okay. And let's use that to locate the player. And let's also use that to decide what level to load. Starting state dot um, map. Yes, map. And let's go to the label loader and let's receive that map ID. And the, 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 the load child map. What map? This map. And we can remove this. And if everything goes well, we are going to appear just in that clearing. What is this? Let's don't say this. It's really here. Okay. Save all. I'm not sure if we need to rebuild. Yes, we of course we do need to rebuild. Actually, there's a gold watch here. Let's see if that works. 
but since we are moving around so much stuff and this gulp file doesn't include the actual assembly phase where we are kind of creating a single bundle from the engine and also the scenario so that's why I don't use it that much actually I was planning to invest some time on making it better but um, I need to better advance on the actual game or, or the actual engine so let's see if it worked it worked because we are here great and it also works because we loaded the um, the map the correct map so that's great um, let's continue with the plan so I'm going to commit these changes for the setup this actually this map I'm going to remove it don't save it I'm going to remove it because there's something else as it wants doing and I'm not sure if we're going to do the tile set for now um, this is the tiles from Ultima 6 which of course we cannot include with the engine but I guess someone is going to eventually use them for the personal project or something uh, so test uh, for forest clearing and um, this one is read starting map and position from scenario info all right now uh, we can also read some other stuff from the scenario info and I think I'm going to do that right now so this initial party right this initial party interesting so let's put that in the scenario info as well starting state in this map in this position and with this party Shamino and Dupre actually in this scenario we're, go we're going to start alone but let's just keep this in case someone wants to um, have the game start with a party and let's locate Dupre somewhere closer to us like uh, 26, 26 like two tiles to the left right that should be enough then start in state start state dot party for each one of these and I'm not sure if I think this project doesn't have a complete way fill ECMAScript 6 setup so I'm going to use I'm going to not use it for now for each party member we are going to use the NPC builder or the NPC factory to create it using the party member ID we're going to use the first level and we're going to use the party member X and Y positions so as you can see what I'm doing is like starting remove, removing some hard coded stuff that we had there as just placeholders
let's see if the watch um, task is working. We are just going to save here and here. Kind of kicked something here. Let's see if that was enough. Right, it worked. So yeah, these are my two party members and that skeleton is actually not a party member, it's just a friendly NPC, I think. And I think one of the things that were pending were making these friendly NPCs behave differently than the party members because it's kind of in a crazy state right now. So he's a friendly but not a party member. So when we go into combat mode, which is already implemented, it gets weird because he acts like he is a party member. Anyways, that's going to be fixed later. So, okay, that was an additional thing. Like a remote hard coded party pod party starting party starting party pod on scenario file. Okay, so let's go back to plan. We 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 want to show the sequence of images and texts uh, when the game starts. So that's based on this. The avatar has been summoned back to Britannia, arriving during the night in a forest near you. And I was actually in here starting working some of that scenes. So I just put some flavor flavor test here at the live from the moon gate phase away. The Britannia night wall comes you into a forest clearing. You cannot forget the smell of these woods. This is unmistakably the forest of the droid droids near you. Let's leave it like this initially. So how we are going to display that? Uh, let's go step by step, and I think initially I will reuse this kind of dialogue um, from the chat stuff then we are going to create a new one so it's going to appear like um, here in the middle I mean this is like a first iteration probably in the future we're going to add some options for customization and all stuff so I'm going to just uh, peek into whatever Camilo did for the um, for the talking interface or for speaking with the NPCs interface so we have this dialogue back okay I'm going to go here we will find there and I'm going to open that with GIMP GIMP and it's my computer is pretty slow so you have to wait for a bit while that loads let's see where we are loading that dialogue back file here we are going to also load the mm, I don't know how to call this message back and it's already loaded here so I'm going to just bury uh, I'm just going to crop this here so it goes all the way to here we don't need the bar at the bottom and here what's happening here We're going to move all these tiles and about this one we are just going to duplicate this one to remove that corner and we're going to crop again. And we are going to export this as 
message back. Right, message back. Da -da -da. Then let's see how Camilo is using this. So he's got a dialogues module. inside here and it got an init function get get cures tint words splitting lines add dialog blinking cursor sample structure start dialog and dialog so I am seeing some functions from here which I we are going to probably share like um, splitting lines probably but for now we are going to just duplicate that into a message box module and we are just going to steal what we need from here so where is it do 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 here here and uh, max width, max line, font size, input prefix. We don't have input check, log, backlog lines, background. For the background, we're going to use the message back that we have. Show more, initial tool, name, name. Oh, this is actually for the tab at the top player input we don't need any of these neither the show more create a scene scheme schema in and order the UI and the game there what dialog UI is adding a new group adding the background and adding this we only need the background name player input show more yeah we don't need that we do need the lines of text, so he's going to is he's adding them here. Max lines, okay. Dialog UI and dialog lines. Wonder why he's creating two. It should be something for the scrolling stuff. So dialog UI is actually the phaser group, and dialog lines is just something that he's going to use for the logic. But he's also adding the bitmap text. Let's skip the logic for now. Fix the camera visible, blinking cursor. Blinking, we will not have a blinking cursor here. Well, actually, let me think about that. So, if we go to the current talk interface, this is the blinking cursor, and you speak, and it appears here and it scrolls. But we are going to need something like a prompt uh, to go to the next screen. But I don't, I don't think it needs to be a blinking cursor. It can be just a text. So let's remove the blinking cursor and also this sample. Of, I mean, the dialogues are much more complex that than the messages that we're going to be showing. Um, and dialog update dialog input send input show more lines send input okay so we are going to init this <clears throat> but ultimately what we're going to have is a method here show message and what message we're going to show is going to be received here and we will use this method Add the dialog, split the message in lines. So here is adding one by one the greeting. Okay, so this function add the dialog, which sends the greeting, is very similar to what we need. So it's using that dialog. Okay, add the dialog, add the dialog, message, split lines. So I'm going to cut this here 
and put it in our show message function and uh, the message is actually just the dialog I am not sure why this is not declared but let's do that show more not not don't show more show more max lines uh, we don't need these for now I mean it will be good if you could just have this contain the logic for if you send a very long test it being able to to divide it into different screens but that's too complex for what we want now so if lines dot land is over the max lines backlog lines splice set input callback dialog now if that happens we are just going to go over the border keywords dialog line is this dot dialog lines because this function I think it splits everything into the dialog lines no it just returns an array but what is returned is here hmm. oh, as I say it's much more complex than what we need we just need to display these uh, lines in the same in this same um, objects that we have here <clears throat> dialog line that text is line dialog line uh, let's do something like this oh what kind of let's put this in a more straightforward logic uh, dialog line and then this. I mean this is basically what we need we don't need tinting words color we don't have a chat log if there's no dialogue line then we reduce this I don't think we need this either this is pushing new lines let's not use that it's actually super simple so it should not need any of these. It's just like uh, taking um, text, split it in lines, then put each line into the each one of the text uh, objects that we have on over the dialog. So, oh my gosh, show more. This is because if it's Show more is false. Well, it's a complex logic here. Start dialog. Okay. So I'm going to assume the we also need to set up the UI to some kind of mode where the player is not moving around but actually any input should go to the next dialogue okay Mm. 
Let's see what we have here. This is, I think it should at least try to work now. So I'm going to go ahead and require this in the same place where the um, dialog box is required. So let's look for that dialog dialogues not very well named dialogues is required here at the main um, module we're also going to require the message box message box and we are also going to initialize it here message box initialize with the game and I think uh, what we are going to do is we're going to have a bus uh, event. So we already have uh, the bus required here and we are going to listen to the message event or the show message event I guess. So let's listen for that. <clears throat> And I'm not sure if this bus or how this bus supports sending objects. Lazy event. Well, this is not very good. <clears throat> Bound here. I don't like this a lot, but uh, let's use it for now. So, anyways, show message, and then it's going to receive the message here. And let's for testing, let's just emit that um, here, I guess. And let's see first if it builds. No errors here, but I'm not sure if errors are shown there. Yeah, it did not build. Let's use the normal build tools, which should show us if there's any errors here. So, message box 43, unexpected identifier. Message box 43 because we missed this comma build again complete it refresh here bus is not defined what? why we don't have the bus here? well we haven't used it um, let's require it We are ultimately going to need it here, I guess, and for something, some, somewhere. It's making the bundle while I loading it, so. Is show more is not defined. Oh uh, yeah, I removed that. So message box is show more. It's going to be undefined. So it's not going to be here. So is show more is no more. The watch is running. Line is not defined. Thirty nine here. Right. This 
this is not going to work. Or is it? I am not sure. What? Lines, splitting lines, dialogue lines, dialogue lines, and this is lines. No, wait, dialogue lines are the actual objects. So, lines at I. No error, but not in show of that either. And yeah, I kind of expected that because I think we are not making this visible anytime. So let's do that. Oh, I was waiting for it to auto refresh. But it was never okay. That was not bad. Um, that's not bad. I wonder if the whole game should stop or not. Because you know, in this engine, it's, it's a hybrid between real time and turn based. And um, because when you are moving around, you are there's I mean you're not in a turn based um, way of interaction but when you go into combat you're in turn based so what if this dialogue pops up when you are potentially going into combat mode what would happen there so I think uh, ultimately it should do that I'm not sure if the dialogues do that because that will be the same question so any case we are going to do some tweaks here so it's it has a gap I guess it had that to show the tab with the name we don't need that anymore I think that's this probably included here hmm. yeah because right now this is like hard coded into a position so that I mean that's not optimal let's for now just try to locate that text better mm, uh, that's what I don't like about this setup eventually I will have to make it more modern so yeah that worked a little bit um, and let's try using a put in a very long message so we can do that here. Testing a very long message. Long message. Uh, once upon a time, there was a very old wizard who had a lot of potions at home. Hmm. So it looks like at least the splitting lines function can be shared between these two methods. Once upon a time, there there was a very old wish wizard. We had a lot of potions at home. Okay. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's do something here. We need we need a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to just put the wish list. We need to allow setting up position margins. Um, probably out the center, vertically and horizontally. I don't know. For now, I'm going to just put this a bit lower, and I am going to change this width 
and I am going to 40 and I'm going to put this a bit more here and I'm going to hope it looks better Yeah, I like it. Let's do like that. And let's tie that with the scenario info. So, so what we're going to do is emit this. Um, where? Well, we are talking about the starting state here. So, we can in the starting state include. Uh, scene and say that we want to play the inter scene when the game starts. So, what we're going to do here is if starting state has a scene, then we're going to get the scene and we are going to get initially these scenes oh uh, wait no this is scenario info scenes in this position and then the scene initially will be just text so we can just go through all the lines in the scene and we are going to emit these messages so th there's a thing here actually we just need to emit the first one and then we need to put some kind of interaction that goes to the next one we need to somehow set the UI set the, this list of messages on the UI but the UI that we have right now, yeah. For now, I am just going to um, display the first one. What's that? Start game is not defined. Oh no, uh, starting state. Starting state is what I meant. I think I need to either assemble again. Yeah, I think I need to assemble again because the scenario info changed. Okay. Alright, we're running close to an hour, so I'm going to pause the streaming here. I will continue offline, and hopefully next time I'm going to be able to show you a bit more of a more elaborate or more concrete advancements through the the first milestone. So we'll see you. I will see you then.